Alright, Dan, that's enough real life Donkey Kong for now. I gotta go shoot Ask the Mead Maker. Dan? Dan? Welcome to Ask the Mead Maker, where I, Ricky the Mead Maker, answer your questions about mead making, mead drinking, mead brewing, really any questions you care to send to me. With our new fall seasonal coming out next week, you can imagine we've gotten tons of questions about how I go about designing new products. As I've mentioned in the past, I do a Firkin Friday every week, which is a form of experimentation. When I'm making something like a fall seasonal, I know all those spices so well, I just brew up a 150 gallon batch and know it's going to be good. But when I'm working with a new ingredient that I've never used before, I experiment. And I experiment in a lot of different ways. I'm not going to talk about those here. There's a long article linked in the description. Next, I'm going to answer an inevitable question from next week, which is, is this paid advertising? No, it's not. I love Vermont Farm Tours. I just went on one. I think everyone should go on one. This is free advertising. You're welcome, Chris. While we're on the subject of garments, I might as well bring up our party. September 12th is a plaid party. And when we got a lot of questions about black tie for our grand opening, I did a little segment on them. Apparently, people don't know much about formal wear. Turns out, people don't know much about wearing clothes in general. The number of questions we have gotten about is plaid flannel, is flannel plaid, can I wear? Wear whatever you want. Wear whatever you want. We have plaid shirts for sale here. They have our logo on them. Just show up. Drink my autumn spice mead with me. It's going to be fun regardless of what you're wearing. We got a question on our blog this week from Tom P, who says, is there a list somewhere of all of the different attributes of yeast, like attenuation, temperature range, and all of that? The answer is yes, there are many such lists. Why Yeast Laboratories has information for every single yeast they make. Same is true of White Labs and most of the dry yeast manufacturers. However, nothing beats experimentation. Get a couple yeasts, brew the same beer or mead or cider, use a different yeast in each one, and then you'll know whether the laboratory is right in their claims or not. Our last question this week comes from Erica. Twice, actually. Once three weeks ago, she left a four-pack of Valkyrie's Choice in her car, and last week she left a four-pack of Fenbury Draft in her car. Both times she wanted to know, is my mead ruined? Your mead is fine. Meat is more robust than many other fermented beverages. It can take a little temperature shifting. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend leaving it on your dash on a 120 degree day, but be smart about it. Remember to put your meat in the fridge. It'll be fine. That said, it's best to take it right home and enjoy it as soon as possible. That's our last question this week. I'll just have to send it over to Ricky with our word of the week. Ricky? Thank you, Ricky. This week's term is naturally carbonated. We made a joke about it a few episodes back and got a lot of questions. All naturally carbonated means is that we allow the yeast to put the bubbles into the final product. What we do here is we force carbonate where we push the bubbles in through a carbonation stone. In winemaking, this is referred to as sparkling versus carbonated because it wasn't confusing enough before. So those are your words of the week. Sparkling, carbonated, force carbonated, naturally carbonated. Keep sending me your questions and I'll answer them as soon as possible. Cheers.